Well, my little fact finders. Some people like them, but most people hate them. I want you to find out facts about the band Nickelback. <laughs> <gasps> you have 30 minutes, and oh boy, I want some goodies. We will see you then. Uh. Welcome back, Fact Hunters. I hope you have had a lovely 30 minutes looking up fact about Nickelback, a band... Nickelback. Ah, oh, this is how you remind me. <laughs> me. Uh, tick for Tom straight away. Very <laughs> good start to the episode. Well, hmm. I asked you to find out facts about Nickelback, and Nathan Kenny, could you please give me your first one? We are coming to you wherever you're sitting in Radio Land. Um, from the little place called New Zealand. And here in New Zealand, there is a radio station called The Rock. And at The Rock, there are DJs. And at the D- at, at, in one of these DJs um, is called Jason Mack. And Jason Mack lost a bet. And Jason Mack has on his face tattooed a picture of Chad Kroger. And instead of holding a microscope, uh, microphone, just as a final insult, Chad, Chad Kroger is holding a dick. Um, so my first fact is you have to be good ladies and gentlemen because otherwise if you're bad you'll get Chad Kroger tattooed on your butt <laughs> this is a very interesting fact because I know Jason Mack yeah you did it's initially say it's on his face on his butt it's a the picture face of, of Chad, Chad Kroger's, Kroger's face on his on butt, his butt. Okay, yes. good. That's way less terrifying. <laughs> I'm so sure I thought you said he had it tattooed on his face. I so thought, did I. That is a bad bet to lose. That is great. Um, <laughs> New Zealand's a classy place, eh? Oh. Jennifer Jewell, take it away. I'm going to go with the fact that nobody is a nickelback. Nobody is a nickelback? Yeah. What do you mean? So this That's is, interesting. So on tour, when Nickelback is touring... Um, their hotel rooms will often be in the names of Dr. Noah Body and Harry Houdini <laughs> because <laughs> Ryan Peake and Chad Kroger apparently don't like to use their own names at hotels. They use silly names instead, and Dr. Noah Body is one of them. That's great. <laughs> um, which one is Ryan Peake? <laughs> Ryan Peake is, he's the other one who's been in the band since the beginning. So it's Chad and his brother Mike, and what? Ryan is... Yeah, and Ryan is the guitarist, keyboardist, backing vocals. And then the fourth member was originally Chad and Mike's cousin, whose name I've forgotten now. Um, and the, so he was the drummer, and he's the one who's been changed out the most times. Right. So is the, the other brother three the, have been with it since the start. Is the brother the bass player? The bass player, yeah. <gasps> Whoa, yeah. I didn't know that. What's yeah. Chad's brother's name? Mike. Chad and Mike. No. Nice. So I'll let you guys have beat you yeah. up at some point, eh? Hey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Adams, you're up now, please. Okay, we we all know the song How You Remind Me. And uh, do we does anyone know how how you remind me was written? Um so it was their kind of breakthrough song. Um it was the one that kind of made them the mo- you know, brought them into, into global fame. And uh apparently it was written, um Chad had written the first four lines of the song. Uh, in a notebook and then got into a fight with his girlfriend and uh, they had a big fight. He stormed off, I guess they, they stormed off into his room and started playing music, um, uh, improvising from these four lines and just kind of shouting. I, and it was like directed at her. Uh, and he, he came out later on. And he's like, she's like, that was really cool. That's really good music. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. Okay. And went back and, started working on it again and in about an hour he'd fleshed it out that's the never made it as a wise man couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing yep that's exactly it uh, and uh here's one that's going to really upset you you guys know that the the kind of i guess the the iconic part of it that yeah, yeah yeah it's not yeah yeah it's yet 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 oh because no, it's are we no. having fun yet oh, no, i just assumed it was fun. yeah 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 are we having fun yet no, it's yet, yet, yet. Uh-huh. That is interesting. Oh. Jennifer Jewell, I would like your second fact of the day, please. My second fact of the day, I looked up the teeny tiny town in Alberta, Canada, where the band is from, which is called Hannah. Hannah. Um, it's, yep, the population is uh, just short of 2,400 people, which is small. 
Uh, it is one of the major flyways for the Canada goose migration. And when I looked it up, I found out that they offer chair yoga on a Thursday. <laughs> but I went to their official town website. And unfortunately, I hate to, to break it to people, chair yoga has been cancelled this week. So oh, don't book your tickets. No. No, no, sorry. But what I did find out from their website is, <laughs> I don't know who runs their website. There's only 3,000 people in this town. Um, they have like half of their news section on their website is what they call the unofficial poop fairy. And it's just someone goes around and takes pictures of people who pick up their dog's poo. And then they take a picture of them and put it on the website. And they're like, yay, well done. You're the poo fairy. That is the most small town thing in the world, though. It's like, <laughs> it's so good. Right. It's both passive aggressive and wholesome. I love it immensely. Wouldn't the poo fairy be a fairy that comes and steals your poo and leaves a coin in your bum? Well, no, I assume what yeah. happens is that they pick up their dog's poo and then they all consolidate it into the one house of the person that no one in the town likes. <laughs> so probably Chad Kroger's <laughs> house when he comes home to visit Hannah. <laughs> it's just a forest of poo. <laughs> oh. Thomas Adams, take us away. What the hell is on Joey's head? I Googled it. I was curious because he keeps asking and we yeah. don't know, but he knows. Chad knows. And it looks like a trophy. It is actually a champagne chiller on the head of their producer when they were drunk out of their minds. <laughs> so what is on? Jo what the hell is on Joey's head? A champagne chiller that's been particularly well polished. What's the what what's the champagne chiller? To? It's like a bucket, a, car a, a carafe, I guess. Uh, oh. For those of you in France, um, you know the thing you put the champagne in with the ice. That's what <laughs> the this, hell is on Joey's head. <laughs> I suppose carafe doesn't run. Picture or much. something. So in this in the music video for uh, photograph. photograph, they um, have a bunch of photographs, and there's a picture of Joey, and there's something on Joey's head, and it is the photograph. It is the look at this photograph. Uh, it's that. Uh, okay. It's that photograph. That we are answering all the big questions in this podcast. Great topic. <laughs> well done, me. Oh. Nathan Kenny. So uh, the biggest album that Nickelback released. Um, was a bit of a surprise that it became so big because the day it came out is remembered for other reasons. It came out on September the 11th, 2001. What? And the band themselves, so this is Silver Side Up, um, <gasps> where all of the big hits came from. Um, the band themselves were sitting, watching CNN going, whoa, and seeing things explode like all of us were. And then one of them said to the others, hey, wasn't our album out today? <laughs> 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 and so uh, despite that, the world cried out for good news. <laughs> and it got it in the form of Nickelback. <laughs> like, best I can do is a new Nickelback album. <laughs> That's more better. And, and what I love, though, is that the the main song on that album is How You Remind Me, which pretty memorable day. I, th I think 9-11 is a bad day. Thanks. 9-11 well, was fine in New Zealand. It was 9-12 that was probably Yeah, that was, that was a trick. 9-12 yeah. <laughs> Trick. sucked. Tricky morning. Right. 9-12 for us is the 9th of December. Oh. Tom Adams, please. Um, a police a police department in uh, Kensington offered a, a apology to Nickelback. A heartfelt apology um, for threatening to force drunk drivers to listen to Nickelback's music. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually very sweet. It's actually very sweet. So, so they did this like, "Don't ruin a good album, or we'll, uh, you know, we'll make you play it. Uh, we'll play it to you as we drive you to the uh, to the station." And then the officer who did it was like, "It went viral. So it went viral." And the officer was like, "I feel kind of bad because I'm a police officer, and I tell my kids not to bully, and I've just bullied <laughs> Nickelback." on a global stage. Yeah. So he released an apology. He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nickelback. Apparently Nickelback took it in stride. They're like, this is actually really funny. But it was like, how can I look my child in the face knowing that I bullied Nickelback? That must be a Canadian cop because there's no way a, an American cop would either apologize or have a prisoner conscious in the back, back of the car. Is it Kensington uh, in England? PEI, I'm trying to figure out where that is. Prince Edward Island? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, yeah. in Canada. So it is a Canada. Jen, mm. noted that you were good at geography just then. First for everything. Well done. Well done. <laughs> I'm good at acronyms is what I'm good at. Geography, no. Um, I said Prince Edward Island. Didn't say what country it was in. Wouldn't have guessed Canada. Jen, I'm taking your point off you because you said PEI was an, was an acronym and not an initialism. Point disappeared. Oh, my bad. Oh. 
I'm I'm a cruel fet controller. <laughs> Nathan <laughs> Kinney, take us to Fet Town. Oh. So I'm just going to continue on with the date theme, seeing as it's getting me all these cool. <laughs> yeah, that's points. working for you, buddy. Shameless pandering. Uh, so Chad Kroger uh, believes vehemently that he's going to die on stage on his birthday, um, which is November the fifteenth every year. But <laughs> so, uh, but he believes he's going to die on his fortieth birthday, which gives him a little bit over two years left. And um, is he thirty-eight? I mean, yeah, so uh, he's only two oh, years older than me. 1974, so, he was born. Oh, I thought you said no. Yeah, he's 47, <laughs> Kenny. Yeah, 47. Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, yeah, because that, that, that was one of my facts: is he's outlived himself by seven years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I can't count everyone. Um, but yeah, just another way that Jake Kroger is wrong. <laughs> so, so Kenny sucks at, at maths. Jen sucks at geography. I Things don't, are looking up for I you, Tom. And I love the fact that you've also ruined Jen's fact for later on. She can't use it now. <laughs> well played. Uh. Jennifer Jewell, please give us a fact. Nickelback's music is worth as much as a bunch of hallucinogenic fungus. So when the band, the original band, so the two brothers, the cousin and Ryan Peake, um, when they were recording, wanted to record their first EP, they got the money off um, Chad and Mike's stepdad, gave them four grand to record this EP. Yeah. They spent two grand on recording the EP and they spent the other two grand on a bunch of mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> now, according to some versions of the story, not all versions, um, Mike, Chad's brother, um, then sold some of the mushrooms and used the money to pay back the stepfather, which is like wholesome drug dealing. It's oh. like Breaking Bad, but with a happy Canadian twist. That's really nice. It Breaking could Jade. have been even better if it was like Jack and the Beanstalk and they'd planted the magic mushrooms <laughs> and a giant mushroom stalk had appeared. And <laughs> it was a giant. But they stole the magic harp that gave them the <laughs> If they um, hadn't stolen the magic harp, the Twin Towers would still be standing. I'm just saying. <laughs> I love the idea of watching Nickelback on stage and they've got a drummer at the back, a bass player, a guitarist, and Chad Kroger's there strumming a harp while he plays. That would be No, it's a magic harp. It plays itself. Giving him more effort to um, focus on his singing. Lovely. Oh, this is great. I'm really enjoying this. Nathan Kenny, please give us a fact. So uh, Chad Kroger looks like a spaniel. No, that's not the fact. Um, (laughs) Chad Kroger was bored on tour in Germany back in the day, and this is pre-Euro days, because he, he he decided he was so bored just before he went out on stage <laughs> that he was going to pay a roadie 600 Deutschmarks to stick his dick into a fan. <laughs> <laughs> so the roadie did. <laughs> and, what type uh, of fan Jeffrey, was this? Was this a ceiling fan? Was it a desk fan? Or was it like, think- or, like someone who liked their music? The sort you get, <laughs> not not the ones that like the music, that's yeah, for okay. sure. Not many of them. Um, for a second, I thought you were going to say like an industrial wind machine one to create effects on stage. And I was like, that feels like amputation territory. That's not a fun story. I don't think that they already had a good time of it. The story oh, came out, Jack Kroger was asked what big rock and roll stories had happened to him, and he gave this as an example. Great fact, Kenny. You were nailing this episode, my friend. Uh, Jennifer Jewell! One of Nickelback's early members uh, peeled his own skin off to get out of the band. <laughs> uh, explain that, Worth that's it. yuck. So Worth when um, when the cousin, the Kroger cousin left, um, they got a new drummer called Mitch Gwinden, I don't know how to say his last name. Um, he joined in 1997, but he had to leave in 1998. And they initially made up some story about him having to go like work in a car shop or something. And then um, later said, quote, he was allergic to cold air. We got to the middle of Canada in winter. Obviously it's going to be cold as hell. And his skin started coming off his body. <laughs> yep. So he peeled his own skin off and left the band and went home and didn't play with them anymore. Oh my God. Mm. But I I do query that because, like, Canada is cold, and I feel like you would know if you were, quote, unquote, allergic to cold air. I feel like that's not a thing. (laughs) That feels like, I've been playing with this band for a while now, and it appears the music is not going to get better. 
But they would have had to left the, let the drummer into the house, and anyone would tell you that that's not <laughs> something you want to do. <laughs> they sleep in the barn where they belong. As a drummer, you guys are losing points. <laughs> Tom, you're looking promising, my friend. Oh. Thomas Adams, take us away. He was a boy. She was a girl. He was Chad Kroger. She was April Lavigne. <laughs> they got married. It was very cute. Then they didn't get married, which was less cute. Mm. But yes, so Chad Kroger and Avril Lavigne met, fell in love, got married in France on Canada Day. <laughs> July the 1st, 2013, on Canada Day. <laughs> what I appreciate is that I don't think they are from the French-speaking areas of Canada. So there's not... <laughs> so it's just disappointing. It's lovely. They've only known each other for a month, right, when they got married? They they were meant to be working together on an album. Um, no, no, they got they engaged. They were like, let's just get married instead. <laughs> yeah. No, they, got, um, they, they started dating and, and were together for like a year before they got married, and then they broke up. A year later. Do you know who else yep. Avril Lavigne was married to? It was, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, the lead singer of one of my favorite bands, Sum 41, Go Derek Fish. Wibley. There was a, so Derek Wibley went to a, um, and his girlfriend went to a Halloween party dressed as Chad Kroger and Avril Lavigne. And, and there's all these photos, everything was really funny. And Chad replied with, I uh, see that little tweet going, hey, Derek, loved your costume. We'll do it for next year. Oh, wait, no, we, we're going to a celebrity-themed party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Jennifer Jewell, hit us up. Starbucks is responsible for Nickelback. What? I'm shocked this hasn't been said already. You know, some bands have, like, really deep meanings behind, like, what their name means. Yeah. Yeah, Nickelback doesn't. Um, one of them worked at Starbucks, and because all the drinks are, like... 3.95 or 4.95 he'd always take the money from people and then be like there's your nickel back because yeah. in america a nickel is five cents and it's <laughs> the change that you get when you buy something that's ends in 95 cents it's amazing i always thought they were they were like um you know in america like the, the coolest guy in school is the quarterback and so then the next step down from a quarter oh. is a dime and then the next step down from a dime is a nickel so they're like the second like the second rate students within the school I thought that, and I thought, oh, that's quite a clever name. But yeah, no. Nope. Way more content. intelligent than you're giving them credit for. These are guys who spend half their first record budget on magic mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> you're close, actually, though, Sam, because um, a nickelback is a position in football that can, American football. So you've got the quarterback, and in some uh, structured plays, you go through a couple of different things and they have a nickelback and it's when you take your running back and turn them into something and all that sort of thing. Um, I don't know enough about American football to tell you the exactitudes <laughs> of all of it. But. Thomas Percival Adams, it is your turn. As you can imagine, I'm, I'm now obsessed with the song Photograph uh, <laughs> because it's, 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 fin it's historical, historical, it's narrative, it's beautiful. It's maybe one of the greatest songs of all time. Yeah. Um, there's a lyric in it which says... Um, uh, there's the school uh, juvenile record says I've broken twice. I must have done it half a dozen times. Mm. Oh, I, I must have done it, yeah, half a dozen times. Actually, it was more like 11 times. <laughs> hey, Kroger broke into his school 11 times to steal money from the safe. He went to juvenile detention for it. What? He, um, yeah, and he's saying like, they? yeah, they're like, ah, oh, are you worried about admitting to this? You know, he's like, I think... I think I'm probably okay for the Statue of Limitations now. <laughs> wow. That doesn't even come for me, Chad Kroger of Nickelback, for breaking into a school 30 years ago or whatever. <laughs> I should be dead by now anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that whole music video is based in that, is actually filmed in that town. It's it's legit. But yeah, he broke in half a, half a dozen, oh, 11 times. <laughs> That's because 11 doesn't scare. Times more. I must have broken no. 11 times. No, wait, it does. It does scare. Uh, if he'd spent more time in school during classes, he would know that 11 is more than half a dozen. <laughs> oh no, my pen ran out. Oh no, it's big. Sorry, in that same um, vein, the, I kept seeing references to him stealing a small truck. <laughs> I just really what? appreciate that they, they were like, he stole the truck, it was just a small truck. <laughs> but then it also makes me think that it was like a toy truck. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Tonka. Oh. Nathan Kitty. Um, a lot of my facts seem to be Chad Kroger facts, but that's because I hate him so much. Um, <laughs> he's great. Uh, he's so great. <laughs> but um, he 
has given a number of interviews where he stated in all seriousness that Nickelback is the most diverse band in the world. And this is a band with his brother that used to have <laughs> his cousin that is made up of four white guys from a town of 2,400 people. Um, <laughs> I think he's wrong. He got in an argument with the lead singer of Slipknot about it, the lead singer of Slipknot, who famously wear yeah, masks. masks. <laughs> to be fair, we don't know who You're Slipknot not. are. They could be like purple Venusians. Like, we don't know. Um, the, the lead singer of Slipknot is actually a very intelligent man. He's actually been on No Such Thing as a Fish, fish a bunch of times. Oh, he has He's also yet. dead. Yeah. What? He didn't the lead singer of Slipknot die? Sorry, Joey Jordison did. Sorry, guys. Is the lead singer <laughs> of Slipknot still alive? Uh, he is. It's just like a number of other members have died. Yep. That does reduce the diversity. <laughs> and it's still <laughs> probably more diverse. <laughs> Then. And four cis straight white men from Alberta, <laughs> Canada. Here, here, here it is, though, guys. Joey Jordison, the drummer of Slipknot, who died, died at 46. So Chad Kroger wins. <laughs> I really like their vocal harmonies. I'm, I'm into that. I, I don't know what I hate about it. It just feels like they've, they're trying very hard to make things that aren't particularly controversial. <laughs> What's actually quite amazing, like, um, because I've, I've read a bit about Chad Kroger's, like, the because he writes and develops some, some most of the songs, he's, he's actually quite a phenomenal musician. But he basically studies, like, he studied all of the hits of, of rock, Very you know, for a re- yeah, and, and like figured out what was making them successful and 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 made a, a, an absolute stinker of a first album. And then, Silver Side, <laughs> you know, Silver Side Up came out, and uh, yeah, he did it, did incredibly well. But, um, like, he's actually like a a musician's musician. Yeah, right. In a very cynical way. It's not like he's writing from the heart. He's writing from the heart, but constructing it in such a way that he's like, this is marketable. Yeah, it's not right. about like the truth of the music. It's about what will get their time and play. Yeah, they're one of the most successful bands on the planet uh, and in, in Canada, particularly. Uh, apparently in Canada, they have to play 35% of... Um, Nickelback the, songs. Yeah. <laughs> 35% of... Nickelback and Brian Adams. Well, guys, I think we should probably start to wrap up. This has been a wonderful episode. We've had such wonderful, wonderful facts. I have got to pick my fave. Kenny, a fact about someone I know is pretty up there. That's pretty great. But, man, the 9-11 thing, I think it's got to be my favorite Nathan Kenny fact. That is lovely. I'm just circling that. Jen, nobody's a Nickelback. (laughs) Very good. Oh, I love about the I love about cheer yoga got cancelled. That was such a sad story. The band starting by making an album for the same amount of money they were spending on magic mushrooms, I think, is pretty darn funny. That is pretty is it? good. It's going to be the fact that cheer yoga was cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. I really enjoyed that. Tom, I love learning about the thing that was on Joey's head. That was good. On drunk oh. drivers. Oh, yeah. Making making the drunk drivers listen to Nickelback is very funny. That guy in Kensington. Um, the fact that he, they got he married April Levine on Canada Day in France, <laughs> and they're not from the French part of Canada. <laughs> that is my favorite of yours, Tom. I love that. Oh. Wow. What a tangled web we weave. They're all good. They've all been so good. I've got it. I've decided. The fact that Silver Side Up came out on 9 11 is my favorite fact of the day. <laughs> well done, Nathan Kenny. Good work, Kenny. Dates have got to my heart once more. Congratulations. You've taken out the episode. Just like Nickelback's taken out. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> and the Twin Towers. And the Twin Towers, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for listening to our big fact hunt. We hope you have found out something new about Nickelback. I know I certainly have found out a million <laughs> new things. Join us again next week where Sir Nathan Kenny will be our fact controller. And we'll talk about a new thing. Please comment and like and subscribe and write down anything you know about Chad Kroger or the other members of Nickelback, whoever they are. And we shall see you anon. Farewell. Listen to this podcast. <laughs> Every time I do it makes me laugh. <laughs>